Okay, uh, welcome to the next test in our series of Revision Blasts, the Edge in A-Level Economics. We take a topic, this time we're looking at consumer and producer surplus. We do a bit of revision for a couple of minutes. Uh, it's good to have your notes out in front of you if you want to check your revision notes. And then we're going to look at eight, in this case, eight multiple choice questions to give you a chance to check your understanding on this key topic. So consumer and producer surplus is, of course, all to do with welfare economics. The wealth of consumers and the wealth of the supply side of the market, the producers. First of all, consumer surplus defined as being the difference between the total amount that consumers are willing and able to pay for a product, which is indicated by the demand curve, and the total amount they actually do pay, the price times the quantity. And we normally show the area of consumer surplus as the area underneath the demand curve and above the market price. In this case, the area will be area A, B, C, if the quantity Q1 is bought and sold. Now, clearly, shifts in the conditions of demand and or supply will bring about a change in price and quantity. So on the left-hand side of the diagram here, we see the, eff the effect of an inward shift of supply brought about by higher supply costs. Those increased supply costs, can you see, increase the price from A to D, and the quantity consumed goes down from Q1 to Q2. Therefore, consumers paying more and consuming less. You'd expect the consumer service to fall. It falls from area A, B, C to an area D, B, E, obviously a fall in consumer surplus. On the right-hand side, however, there's an increase in demand. And uh, other things being the same, if there's no shift in supply, if there's an increase in demand, consumers are willing and able to pay more for something. The quantity goes up from Q1 to Q2, price goes up from A to G, but the area of consumer surplus will rise from A, B, C to area G, H, I. So that's consumer surplus. Let's quickly revise producer surplus. And that's defined on the supply side of the market. Is the difference between the price that producers, suppliers, are willing and able to, to sell a product for and the price they actually get in the market. And producer surplus is shown by the area above the supply curve and below the price. In this case, the surplus will be area A, B, C. Typically, of course, when prices go up, producers expand supply because of the profit motive. They stand to make more producer surplus if they sell more at a higher price. And again, shifts in demand, shifts in supply, we're bringing about changes in producer surplus. On the left-hand side, we see the effect of uh, lower supply costs, a fall in cost, causing Market supply to shift out from S1 to S2. You move down the demand curve to a higher quantity consumed Q2. The price comes down from A to F. And producer surplus originally, area ADB, now increases to area FEC. On the left on the right hand side, the right hand side, an outward shift of demand with supply remaining, conditions of supply remaining the same. The market price goes up from A to D. There's an increase in quantity bought and sold from Q1 to Q2, and producer surplus will go up from area A, B, C to area C, D, E, or D, E, C, however you want to explain it. Higher demand increases price and increases producer surplus. Okay, let's try some questions. Good chance here for you to have a pen or paper handy, and just press the pause button when you want to end the video to have a, go at a question, and then we can come back to us for the answer. We have eight questions for you in this particular part of the BLAST series. Question number one, an increase in the demand for a good is most likely to cause what to happen? Increase in demand for the good is most likely to cause what? Press the pause button, have a go at the question, and then just press play when you want to go through the answer. Okay, what do we think? The answer to question one is A, a rise in both price and producer surplus. Actually, it just goes back to the diagram we showed a little bit before, a few minutes ago. Let's take, for example, the demand for new housing. For example, if there's an increase in demand for new homes, house prices would go up, the quantity of homes bought and sold would rise. In my diagram here, the original producer surplus is C, P1, B, area above the supply curve, below the price. And after the increase in demand, the area of producer surplus is area C, P2, A, a bigger area of producer surplus. Higher demand... Good news for the profits of home builders. Question number two. The diagram shows the demand for and the supply of a good. Which area, and we have to be careful here, 
which area measures the difference between the total amount consumers would be willing to pay for the equilibrium level of output and the minimum amount that producers require to produce that level of output. Press the pause button, have a go at the question. I'll be back in a few seconds with the answer and the explanation. Okay, so for this question, the answer is C, X plus Y. And the reasoning is that the total willingness to pay is the entire area underneath the demand curve. It's X and Y and the bit underneath. Un un underneath. And of course, the area underneath the supply curve is the minimum amount the producers require to produce the output. So hence, that's the difference between the total willingness to pay and that minimum amount. Of that area, Y would be producer surplus and X would be consumer surplus. Let's try question three. The diagram on the right here shows an individual's demand curve for a commodity. The supplier of the commodity charges a price P, but limits the quantity available to each purchaser to OQ. They feel like they ration the quantity available. Which area on the diagram measures the consumer's surplus? Have a go at question number three. Okay, the key to this is to think about the fact that output supply is restricted. We, we're not going to go beyond Q. And you don't get surplus utility from not consuming something, if that makes sense. So the correct answer to question three is, have you got it? B, X plus Y. Output is restricted to OQ. Therefore, the area of consumer surplus Z, that little triangle to the right, is irrelevant because consumption has been restricted. So consumer surplus is anywhere above the price, P, and below the demand curve. So its area is X plus Y. Answer B. Question number four. A government sets a maximum price for a, uh, a good below the equilibrium price. What will be the net effect on the welfare of consumers and producers? And uh, your options... A, B, C, and D should be should appear on the top right of your screen. What's the net effect on the wealth of consumers and producers? Have a go at question number four. Okay, what do we think? Not easy, this one. If you get it right, big respect. The answer is C. The net effect on consumer welfare is actually uncertain, but we can be pretty sure that the net effect on producers is not good news. Let me take you through the reason for this. Let's consider a maximum price in the housing market, let's say. So let's take an area, uh, the, the price in free market price is P1. We introduce a maximum price of C, a ceiling of C. Can you see that, the yellow dotted line? That means the producer is selling less now because they won't be willing to sell as much. The quantity will be restricted to Q3. Suppliers won't sell, sell as much at the low price. They're getting price C. So producer surplus before the maximum price was area A, P1, B, the area below the price and above the supply curve. Now they're getting price C, so it's area A, C, D, because, of course, they're going to restrict supply at a lower price. They don't have as much incentive to supply at the lower price. So producers are worse off. Consumer surplus before the maximum price is area E, A, B. Sorry, uh, whoops. Consumer surplus before, sorry, my mistake. It's E, P, 1, B. Whoops. Got it right now. So the consumer surplus before the maximum price is area E, P, 1, B. Quick change of diagram. After the maximum price, well, they're better off in the sense the price is now lower so they're going to get more consumer surplus. But output has been restricted to Q3. So the area of consumer surplus after the maximum price is E, C, D, G. Uh, therefore, there's been an area of gain and an area of loss. Now, we can't be sure what's likely to happen. It does depend on the extent to which the quantity falls and how low the maximum price is. And the elasticity of demand, of course, comes into it. In my diagram, it looks as if the consumer might be marginally better off, but of course we can't be sure. It depends on the scale of the maximum price where it's set and the elasticity of demand and supply. Therefore, 
um, there's an uncertainty and therefore the change is uncertain hence the answer I quite like question five I'd love you to have a go at it an industry consists of two firms X and Y the profit payoff matrix shows how profits of X and Y depend on the prices charged by the two firms if both firms decide to follow a strategy of joint profit maximization both firms then what can you predict have a go please at question number five so this is a little bit of a prison's dilemma oligopoly collusion question uh, what do you think happens if they both follow a strategy of joint profit maximization the answer is D consumer surplus falls producer surplus rises reason being that joint profit maximization implies that both firms are looking to collude to set a high price of 10 pounds each if they do that they're gonna make a joint profit can you see top left of 12 million pounds Compared if they both competed vigorously with each other on price and both charged five pounds, they wouldn't make a, a dime of profit either way. They'd make a, a break even, zero profit. So joint profit maximization means they're going to make higher profits. Well, that means producer surplus will be higher. But of course, collusion to set prices high increases the return to the producer, but it's going to decrease consumer surplus. Consumers will be worse off if they have to pay more for their pharmaceutical products or their cement or whatever it happens to be. So that's why the answer to question five is D. Hope you got that right. Nice question. What about question six? Which one of the following is most likely, most likely to result in a, an increase in producer surplus in the market for instant cocoa? Have a go at question six. So question six. What's going to be benefiting the producer in terms of producer surplus? The answer is D, new technology in the production of instant cocoa. Can I show you the reason why? New technologies available to cocoa producers will lower their supply costs. This will cause an outward shift of supply and therefore an expansion of quantity of demand. Did you move down the demand curve? Lower costs mean that you get more profit for every unit you sell and therefore producer surplus will go up. Probably easier if I show you in a diagram here. Can you see S1 shifting to S2? Price falling from A, F. Producer surplus initially A, D, B. Now F, E, C. The, the cocoa makers are making a higher producer surplus. Question seven. What is necessary for consumer surplus to be zero? What is necessary for consumer surplus to be zero? Have a go. Is this deceptively simple, this question? It's a question about visualising what a demand curve and a supply curve looks like, I suppose. The correct answer to question seven is A. A. And the situation here is as follows, that if we have a perfectly elastic demand, as I've shown in this diagram here, any change in supply has no change in price. There's no difference between the price the consumer is willing and able to pay and the price they actually do pay. So there's no consumer surplus when demand is perfectly elastic. Okay. We have time and room for one more question. Quite like this question. Have a go. A market is in equilibrium at a price of twenty pounds. Market supply changes from being inelastic at each price to become more elastic at each price. But we're told that the market equilibrium price does not change. The question is what is the effect on consumer surplus? And what's the effect on producer surplus? one of those things where visualizing how the diagram might look or having a little sketch could make a big difference to getting this right so do press the pause button take a moment to answer the question and then just press play when you want to check your understanding and the right answer to this question is c consumer surplus is unchanged producer surplus falls hope you got that right let's quickly look at the reasoning the, the rationale here so initially, uh, uh, the price is £20, and uh, the producer surplus is A, B, C. You can see that the area above the supply curve, below the price. Then if we make supply more elastic, like that, S2 instead of S1, so that's inelastic, more elastic, 
The price stays the same, so the producer surplus is now area A, B, D, or A, D, B, whichever you want to look at it. There's less producer surplus. No change in the price, no change in the quantity. Therefore, consumer surplus remains the same. So how did you get on with those eight questions? Hopefully you did quite well on them. They're a nice little tricky tricky test of your understanding of, of a key concept. And just there quickly, thinking about the topics where consumer surplus and producer surplus can, can be used productively to score high analysis marks. Any any form of intervention in the market it could be a direct tax, indirect tax, could be a subsidy, could be some sort of intervention in the form of a price ceiling or a price floor, any kind of intervention, a buffer stock, a buffer stock scheme, for example, you can bring in consumer producer surplus and are encouraged to do so. It helps the analysis. Likewise, at the micro level through the firm, any any question on the impact of uh, contestable markets, changing con concentration, more competition in markets, the impact on regulation, for example, on both suppliers and consumers, the impact of collusion we mentioned in one of the questions, didn't we? That could be talked about. And on the macro side, perhaps even a tariff, an import tariff or a quota or a subsidy, a macro policy can have an impact on the consumer welfare within industries and in related industries. Always try to link consumer and producer surplus back to concepts of efficiency, in particular allocative and productive efficiency. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining in Test 6, 16, Test 16 on consumer and producer surplus.